I'm pleased to welcome you today to Baker Roar's webcast on the coronavirus. I'm Rob Blethen, EVP of DS Baker Advisors. It's no secret we're in challenging times. At Baker Boyer, we've helped clients successfully navigate these types of challenges for over 15 decades. The email we recently asked you, our clients, what questions do you have about the current environment? We had an overwhelming response, so I wanted to thank all of you for that. We're going to attack most of the banking and lending related questions via email, so look for that in your inboxes. Today, we're excited to get you answers to your questions related to your investments, the financial markets, financial planning, and the stimulus package. Joining me from their home offices are literally two of the smartest people I know. First, we have Baker Boyer Chief Investment Officer John Cunnison. John is a chartered financial analyst that has been a frequent contributor to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. News and World Report, and Yahoo Finance. Also joining us is Baker Boyer Financial Planning Manager Brian Brueggemann. Brian is a certified financial planner that has been a frequent contributor to Barron's, U.S. News and World Report, and Market Watch. Good morning to both of you. How are you doing? Pretty good. Well, working from home has its pluses and minuses. Yeah, I can imagine. So as a format, we're going to alternate between the two, and uh, we're going to fire the first question John's way. John, you ready? I'm ready. I have a feeling you're going to ask me about the market. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, so this client wants to know, where is the market going? Are you advising clients to hold tight? Sure, it's a, it's a great question and, you know, an obvious one in the circumstances. We've seen a lot of volatility in markets. Um, you know, I think the first thing is to start with, you know, just a brief look at the economy. Um, and of course, with all the social distancing that's going on, we're having, you know, both demand shocks on the economy and supply shocks, you know, demand shocks in that we're all staying home. We're not buying like we used to. Supply shocks in that there's some of us who can't go into work and produce the output of the economy that we used to produce. So you're going to see, you know, some pretty drastic declines in economic output, um, very substantial, in fact, record levels in a quarter. So you can see a chart um, here, and this is Vanguard's forecast for the second quarter. So that big drop you see in this chart, um, that is the second quarter GDP number. You can see it drops very substantially into the double digits, um, and then it recovers very, very quickly. Now, I think it's really important to understand that that doesn't mean we're going to be back up to levels of output in the third quarter um, that we were before all of this. Um, this second chart um, that you can see here, this thing, I think, is a better look. And you can kind of see that, um, you know, that jump up, that's the, that's the increase in output over the second quarter, right? So that's just increasing from what is a very low level. But the second chart is going to show us, you know, what we can see over time all the way to the, the end of 2021, where we don't even get back up to the output levels that we had before the crisis. So this is just to say that this is a, a very substantial hit to the economy and the output of the economy, although we can see, you know, with assumptions that we do get on the other side of this virus, and we expect we will, that we'll, we'll recover. Um, so that's, that's the economy on the market. The market's responded. Um, and that's what markets do. They price in all of this information. And right now, you know, stock price is just, it's, a, it's, the, it's pricing those future cash flows of stocks. And with this hit we've seen to the economy, it's almost certainly to, certain to have an impact on those, those especially near-term cash flows. Um, and that's being reflected in market prices. So um, there's been a substantial correction. In the question of are we advising clients to hold tight, I think the answer is yes. So the response both to the virus we think is appropriate and aggressive and the response to really holding up the economy, both from the Federal Reserve and from you know, the government has been substantial. Um, there's likely to be a rebound that's equally strong on the back side of this. So I think it's important for clients as nerve wracking as this can be to hold tight. Good. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. so Brian, this one's for you. Is Baker Boria doing anything for small business in order to survive the crisis? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. I was actually talking with Russ Colombo uh, yesterday, and I know that our business advisors are proactively talking to clients. We've got a lot of phone calls from um, small businesses in our markets. One of the big question marks right now is the CARES Act. 
Um, that was something that was agreed upon on the House yesterday. I, I believe it was yesterday morning. Um, there's 800 plus pages and the price tag is massive. Um, it is the total amount of relief as far as the coronavirus goes is almost six trillion dollars. If we look at the cost of World War II, that was only four trillion dollars in today's um, if you adjust it for inflation. Now, the, the devil's in the details and the way the tax code works and really sort of legislation is that this CARES Act is really sort of a uh, it, it's a concept. It's kind of high level what we're wrestling with right now, and I know the, the business advisors are doing this, is really looking for guidance on how to implement some of these um, disaster loans that are in the bill. Um, there's a lot of government guarantees. Mm -hmm. There are things like, uh, I believe one of them is called the Paycheck Protection Loan, where the government would actually forgive business loans if certain employment targets are, are kept. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to wrap our arms around this as quickly as possible. Um, and that's really going to, going to be really important. Great. Thanks, Brian. So this next one's for John. It appears there are several areas in the banking industry with liquidity issues. Is that true? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good question. And I think, uh, if, if we were sitting here in 2008 or nine, I would say absolutely that's true. I think one of the really important differences between 2008 and 9 and today is that the banks are actually fairly healthy. In 2008 and 9, mm -hmm. the crisis really originated out of the financial industry. Um, and it was due to, in some ways, a lot of over leveraged financial institutions getting into a lot of trouble and running into uh, liquidity issues. Today, that's actually a relative strength that um, that we have as a as a you know global economy is that financial institutions in part as a result of some of the changes we made um, out of 2008 and 9 we have fairly strong financial institutions so again when we get on the other side of this virus we do have the financial institutions the ability to lend to recovering businesses and a recovering economy that should fuel uh, the the recovery from you know what will inevitably be I think a recession. So in a, in a short answer to your question, I think the liquidity challenges are really not in the banking system, um, but there have been some liquidity challenges in the financial markets and the Federal Reserve has stepped in in a big way um, and essentially become that lender or buyer of last resort. So where we got some dislocations in the bond markets, which essentially means for every seller, there wasn't a, a readily identifiable buyer the Fed has become that, given those markets confidence, and those markets are running smoothly now. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, this next one, these we asked these questions earlier in the week, so I know um, a lot of things have happened since then, but this client asks, I've heard there's a stimulus package in the works. How will that work? Yeah, I mean, I think this kind of goes back to the first question, and, and some of my answer is it applies to businesses and the government guaranteed loans. But, you know, with 800 plus pages, um, there are tons of different ways that the government is trying to, I wouldn't even say stimulate the economy, but sort of provide a bridge until things settle down. So one big um, change that will impact a lot of our clients, a lot of retirement plan changes. So there are some options where clients who usually have to take required minimum distributions, they can defer those. Um, in 2020, they don't have to take those. Um, there's also distribution, early distributions where the penalty, the 10% penalty, if you're um, under age 59 and a half, that could be waived up to $100,000 if you're impacted by the virus. Um, and one that's getting a, a, you know, there's increased unemployment benefits. Um, there's a slew of things, but the one that's probably gotten the most press is the direct rebates to individuals. So $1,200 per adult, $500 per kid. Um, what's interesting about this is when this started getting floated, in my mind, I thought, well, are they going to have some way of making sure it gets those funds get to the right people? And it's actually a pretty innovative way that they went about it is they look at your last tax return. So if you filed your 2019 tax return, they'll look at that. 
Um, if you didn't or you haven't yet, they'll look at your 2018 tax return mm -hmm. and basically adjust or kind of reduce your payment once you get above a certain income threshold, um, which I thought was a really good way to sort of speed all this up um, as far as means testing. There's some other changes as far as charitable gifting, some really good tax benefits for businesses in addition to the loans. Um, like I said, this is probably the biggest um, price tag on a bill that's, that's gone through Congress so quickly. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. So the next one's for John. This client asks, have you made any changes to your strategy on stocks, foreign markets, and the Russell Index in reaction to this pandemic? Yeah, and that's a, a really good question. And the answer is, um, fundamentally, we haven't made dramatic changes. Um, I think where, you know, some of the changes that would be notable would be that our, uh, our uh, I guess, uh, preference not to hold cash um, in portfolios in the past um, has been relaxed somewhat. So we're letting cash levels rise a little higher than we might normally. Um, and the reason for that is basically that in times of great uncertainty, optionality is your friend. And what does that mean? Well, it just means what, what are some assets that really give us the ability to make choices? Um, and cash is one of those, those assets. So we're allowing cash levels to rise a bit. Um, as far as changes that we're making in uh, other parts of the portfolio, I would say that we're not making in dramatic changes, and that's because some of the areas of the market that we thought looked attractive before uh, the uh, the reset or what's the coming recession or this uh, disruption, um, some of those areas look still look very attractive. Um, you know, those include you know lower price stocks, includes international stock. You know, all of those areas of the market I think look very attractive for you know a, a recovery. Great, thanks, John. So this next one's for Brian. Client wants to know. Are there things we could be doing to improve our situation? Yeah, um, you know, I've thought a lot about this and, and my role at the bank is really kind of taking portfolios or a client's overall financial situation and putting it all together for them. One thing that I'm fond of saying in a lot of meetings is that there's a lot of levers that we can use to improve a client's situation, but the biggest lever is spending right? The, the client's withdrawal rate from their portfolio has the biggest impact on their chances of success. Um, so being mindful of your spending is always good advice. Right now with social distancing, um, a lot of the discretionary spending that clients may be accustomed to, um, travel, dining out, mm -hmm. all those things that are negatively impacting uh, the broader economy for clients' portfolios, right? That's where the money often comes from. So a lot of that is is being curtailed automatically. And there's there's things kind of like I just mentioned with the required minimum distribution being deferred. I actually met with um, a client yesterday via teams like this, and we were discussing um, the ability to not take the required minimum distribution and do things like Roth conversions. Um, it, it gives you some more planning optionality um, I've got a webinar I'm going on later today and then again on Tuesday to to think through financial planning specific strategies to to help our clients even more. Great. Thanks, Brian. John, this client asks, our portfolio is 60% stocks, 40% bonds. Is that a good place to be? It, it's a it's a really good and, and I think a, a common question that we get. Um, you know, it's interesting because often it depends on the time period. So, you know, in the in the lead up to the disruption we, you know, encountered, uh, people were wondering, you know, shouldn't I shouldn't I have more stock exposure? Um, you get into a period like this, and you realize why you have that forty percent in bonds, um, and it really kind of shows its value. So, it can be a really, it, yeah, it's a wonderful place. I mean, the the real answer is it depends on your specific situation, right? And so. That would be, you know, in large part, a question for Brian and his department to look at, you know, the, you know, what's your financial plan look like? Is a 60-40 portfolio, is it the right portfolio for you? And there's a couple of ways that we look at that, your ability and willingness to take risk. 
Um, but broadly speaking, you're talking about a portfolio that has risk assets in stock, right? And those are faster growing, um, but more volatile as we've seen over the, you know, this recent time period. But then the bond portion, which is probably slower growing, but far more stable. And there's moments like now where we're, we're glad we hold them. Um, going forward, if we look in the next five years, you know, right now bonds look, they look somewhat expensive. If you buy a 30 year bond, a treasury bond today, you know, you get a 2% yield over 30 years. Well, there's a lot of stocks that have a 2% dividend yield, plus you get any of the earnings growth on top of that. So when we're comparing the two, you know, 60 40 portfolio is a wonderful portfolio to have but as we look forward does it make sense to tilt a little bit more toward uh stock exposure once we get a little bit more certainty around where the this uh, uh you know the virus is going i think that's something to be thinking about mm -hmm. makes sense so brian question for you what is the role of a wealth management advisor during times like these I think the the answer to that question is really helping clients make decisions under stress. So that that takes a lot of different forms. Um, you know, clients are obviously nervous right now, or or a lot are nervous. Um, but having someone to bounce ideas off of, so that you know you're not making a de the wrong decision under pressure, um, doesn't mean you're not going to take that path. But having someone to um, have as a sounding board is really valuable and something that i'll just mention and i i found a graph nine of the largest swings in the market in the last two decades occurred over the last 15 days of trading meaning the swings in the market are historically large so going into or out of the market on a daily basis um, really is is really really risky um, you know, a lot of clients get value out of confidence in their situations. And I know that a lot of the clients that I work with, we use financial planning software that, you know, especially over the last two weeks, gives them a lot of comfort that, you know, they're still going to be okay. So those people with pension, social security that don't have to withdraw on their portfolio, by using those tools, an advisor can really add, add value mm -hmm. for a client. Makes sense. Good. So this this last question is for either of you, and it's really, do you have any final thoughts that could help our clients? Just one final thought I think I would have is that, you know, we're in the situation where, you know, we've, you've heard this phrase, an, an exogenous shock, but it's this shock to the financial system from something that comes out from outside of it. In this case, you know, a viral pandemic. Um, one of the interesting things about a situation like that is, you know, the, the final solution is really a vaccine, um, which, you know, there's a lot of resources being put into, you know, finding that vaccine. You know, it's obviously still a little ways out, but once we find it and deploy it, um, I think we, we really need to be prepared for an economy that, you know, moves forward with some force um, as, you know, Americans and people around the world kind of come out of quarantine and are ready to, to, to celebrate. I mean, I think you can see a really strong rebound. And in that environment, some of the things we haven't been worried about for a long time, we may need to be thinking about, like inflation. Um, so that would be my, my final comment. Good points. Yeah, I think, I think my final thought would be kind of what I just said, slow down, find someone, you know, if you have an advisor at Baker Boy or Bank, whether it's a business advisor or a family advisor, reach out and, and you know, ask questions, be informed, slow down. Um, you shouldn't make financial decisions really quickly. Um, so just make sure that you take advantage of, you know, the experts that we have here at Baker Boyer to, to make sure you're making informed decisions. That's great advice. Well, good. I want to thank both of you and, and thanks to all of you for joining us to our webcast. Uh, I wanted to encourage you all to go to bakerboard.com. We have a great financial intelligence section there where you can get a lot more information similar to what we heard today. Encourage all of you to stay healthy and, and we really appreciate your support. Thanks. Mm -hmm.